Are you someone who is very soon moving to Belgium or any of the countries in the Europe, specifically Western Europe? This video is just for you because so I'll be asking and answering some very generic questions you might have about visiting this country and considering if you're considering to study here or work here. So make sure you watch this video till the end because there's loads of interesting video information awaiting for you in this video. I've seen in all Bollywood movies, the weather there is just amazing. I can't wait to start my fairy tale. How's the weather there? Well, very nice question and very important one as well. If you're coming from India, you're of course used to sunny weather. But when you come here, initially you'll see of course, uh, the good part, you will find the weather cooler, not that harsh sun. But when you stay for longer, you will realize where the hell is sun and it will be dark, gloomy, rainy, windy, be prepared for that because on an extended period such kind of weather has an impact on your mental health as well. So come prepared. And uh, also very important point is that you get in a year, in a year just three months of uh, summer and that's where you can enjoy the most, okay, you can enjoy the good weather, rest of the time the weather will really disappoint you and it's really unpredictable. I am a vegetarian, so I don't eat any eggs and meat and all. So how are my food options there? Can I go and eat out and enjoy in some restaurants? Me too. I'm also a vegetarian. So let me tell you, uh, vegetarianism is not very, very common here. So when you go out in a restaurant, first of all, some places you will have to explain what vegetarian food is. It might take them by surprise that such kind of food exists. Uh, sometimes when they know and it's very popular there to have vegetarian food because there are lots of Indian tourists or vegetarian people coming around there, you will find some things. But then the menu is really limited. Sometimes when we go to restaurants, we know that we have only one or two options to order. So that saves time. But uh, jokes apart, there's not much. There are certain restaurants which are vegan, okay, because of all this yoga culture and all and uh, animal friendly people. So they have veg uh, veganism uh, very popular. But then let me alarm you already, do not expect much. They are expensive. Plus the taste buds are not really compatible with our Indian taste buds. So yeah, there will be taste shock. Uh, food will be relatively less, less, less salty and less spicy. We just need that, right? So, come prepared. Apart from my mother tongue, I know very good English. So, I think I'll be good there, right? I mean, will I be able to manage my day-to-day -day activities and work? Uh, like taking an appointment, uh, asking for directions, going to buy something? I also used to think so, but sorry. I broke your bubble uh, because you, if you have an amazing level of English, it will really not help you a lot here. Uh, when I came here, I had just passed IELTS exam for altogether different project, but um, I got in, an, in advanced IELTS 8.5 score, but that has never ever helped me here because the local languages of Belgium are French, Dutch, and certain section of people also prefers to speak German. Apart from this English, it's really slowly coming up. There's still more time for it to be accepted widely. But then if you need to get your official work done, you need to interact with locals, you need to get your work done or even take an appointment or anything, uh, you really need to have a hold of any one, at least any one of the local languages here, at least the basic. Surviving just on the basis of English will cause you much trouble. I have a driving license in India since 10 years and I think I drive really well. Uh, I think it would be easy for me to drive there and get a driving license as well. Yeah? I'm sorry, getting a driving license here in Belgium, it's really a pain in the... But you need to try. It's really expensive. You cannot, cannot uh, just depend on your Indian driving license because we all know. How, how, with what uh, difficulty or easiness we already get driving license in India. You might be driving really, really well. I, I must say, you are a perfect driver there. 
but this is belgium you drive not on the left on the right there are altogether different rules there are priority rules and i know people i myself i have spent so much of money in getting those driving lessons despite being a very good driver in india so uh, you get, take classes and then you give theory exams uh, risk perception tests practical exams and i really know rarely rarely some people who have passed those practical exams despite having all those driving lessons in one go it takes time you need to get translators and book appointments it's all together you know a different thing it takes time money energy so short answer no getting a driving license in belgium itself is a separate huge topic okay i can make a video on that let me know because me and ashu both have gone through this process we are going through this process uh it's not impossible but you know we have so much of bad driving habits that we don't even know of and if you just come with your indian driving license go book an exam it won't take even 5 minutes the examiner will just find out mistakes and say you bye bye next time i'm coming along with my kids who go to school I heard the schooling is free there. It should not be a problem to find a good school and uh, get them admitted there. Yes, of course, the schools are free. But hello, only French and Dutch schools because they are the government schools. If you want your children to go to an English school, you'll have to be prepared to shell out some thousand to fifteen hundred euros per month for the fees of one child, and. If you are the single bread earner of your family and you have let's say two children and your company is not sponsoring the fees of your school children then please think twice how easy it is to find a good house or apartment to rent there like i told you in my last video when i gave you a kitchen tour of my new apartment i told you right this is my fifth apartment where i am moving so i must tell you finding the dream house according to your requirements and budget is really really a challenge here so there are agencies which help you but then the process is almost the same you have to literally apply to those listings okay you have to share resume kind of thing okay what you do for a living and uh, since when you are here and your salary slips as well because owners need to be convinced that you will be able to pay the rent that they are demanding you everyone cannot just take every apartment so after all these criteria checks if owner finds you suitable they will approve and uh, give you the house of course if both the parties agree but then there are sometimes lots of restrictions you see sometimes they are they don't allow people families with kids with pets and etc etc so it is quite a journey i really find the website imoweb very helpful uh, i have found almost all my houses through that website only and it has helped me a lot i'll put the link in the description so you can make good use of it to find your apartment and uh, yes language comes into play because sometimes the owners they do not know very good english it's just like hi hello so you really have to either know the local language or use google translate it's not very smooth the rental contracts they are not at all written in english okay they are always in the local language french or dutch so you can make out uh, what you are entering into the rent for one bhk apartment let's say in the center of brussels okay if you are in the really city center or some uh, popular area of brussels would be somewhere around 900 to 1200 euros per month depending if your apartment is furnished unfurnished etc etc Okay, uh, so once I find a house, uh, are there any general social rules I should know in order to make my stay comfortable and hassle-free? Yeah, it's not over yet. You got a house, congratulations! But then you have to know about certain things. Uh, Indian perspective, we cook Indian food, so lots of spices. Uh, the smells are really strong. Okay, so. people here detect that quite early because for us we are used to those smells okay so we like those smells but that's not the case with the neighbors here if it's too much they might just come to your home knocking and complaining to really fix it okay because it disturbs them 
uh, apart from that noise we are used to talking loudly okay but here people prefer to stay calm okay they don't speak loudly like us so you have to bring your noise levels voice levels down and uh, also you have to be careful while walking you should not be you know putting heavy steps because uh, in most of the apartment uh, apartments are really old here so the noise isolation is not very good so you have to take care of the noises about your tv music and how you speak etc and you really have to also pay attention to the noises you make when you have guests at your home so when we have a house party or something and we are making lots of noise after 10 your neighbor might knock and warn you once but if it's a repetitive behavior don't be surprised if you find police knocking at your door and giving you a final warning okay 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 i i'll take care of all that uh so how uh, difficult it is to furnish a house there like buying electronics and buying uh, furniture i remember when i was living in pune and we were furnishing our our apartment whatever furniture we bought uh the delivery was like it was unspoken and understood delivery will be free and the shopkeeper will uh, take the responsibility to get it delivered but i was really surprised to find here that uh, you really do not get free delivery uh, they say that the furniture at ikea is cheap and all but then when i was furnishing this apartment i realized that uh, ikea might be offering uh, cheap furniture options which still when you sum it up it's not really uh, in the cheap category you really have to take out money from your pockets to buy those furnitures uh, the delivery which they offer is also not free even for click uh, you know uh, collect and go service they charge minimum of 30 euros and for delivery of furniture depending on their size they charge anywhere between 60 to 90 or more uh, euros for the delivery at your doorstep so i would say you because i am assuming when you come here you will not come directly with your own car you will be waiting you will be furnishing and later you will get your car so you will have to go to the shop so you will have to either rent a vehicle to go there bring the stuff which will uh, be costing you some money or take the public transport and usually ikea is of course in the outskirts of cities so it's uh, not really reachable so solving this problem about the furniture might be come as a challenge when you talk about the price of electronics i would say belgium is really not known for having uh, cheap electronics unlike uh, germany and usa which offer good deals but here at least you can get a uh, next day delivery okay free of course uh, i have used websites like bold.com and uh, cool blue which i absolutely love they deliver the your electronic devices at your doorstep next day within 24 hours uh, without any extra charges okay 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 that's giving me lot of clarity and i think i can plan my things accordingly uh by the way i'm a very very sincere employee in india i start my day early i'm at my desk at 10 am and if needed i can also stretch till 10 pm and uh, not to say i can i can also work on weekends so i think uh, clients will really appreciate this quality in me and it will give me an edge over others no of course of course this will give you an edge over others but uh, not in a positive way uh, in a negative way i'm not sure if they will uh, your clients will appreciate this behavior uh, but definitely they'll start disliking you uh, because point 1 uh, 10 am is uh, when all the meetings are already finished it's not at all early uh, early for them and on time for them is between 7 to 8 when they uh, start logging in and start uh, paving the path for the day by 10 all the meetings and everything is done okay uh, apart from that they really like to maintain that work life balance and the line between that so if they find you you're stretching over weekends or uh, staying up till uh, 10 and doing your work they might consider it as not your sincerity but definitely your inefficiency in india i have a domestic help for almost everything like cooking cleaning even for washing clothes and utensils When I come there I just want to focus on my work and also on traveling. I hope I'll find similar domestic help there also. Well if you're rich rich of course why not you can of course hire a domestic help anything is possible with money. 
but i guess you're not a rich rich if you're watching my video about these challenges in belgium uh the domestic help and all these are very very expensive services all the services are very expensive here in developed countries so for example if you want to hire a domestic help to clean your apartment and you agree to give uh, him or her a work for 3 hours they will charge somewhere about 20 euros per hour which is roughly like 1700 rupees for 1 hour that's expensive so better just like everyone else we uh, prefer to do our own household work domestic work like cooking uh, washing the dish, uh, utensils uh, cleaning your la uh, laundry etc etc and not just talking about domestic help uh, but i must tell you uh, plumbers electricians all these people are also very expensive so it's good if you know uh, normal uh, things to get your household work going when in uh, in terms of fixing things but if you don't know uh, these people might charge you up to you know 150 euros just for one visit for a simple thing don't be surprised so yeah we have learned it the hard way we lost our uh, apartment key once and the person came just to open that door lock and i think we paid somewhere 140 euro for him to just unlock that door he didn't even break the lock he just put some uh, plastic film between the door rim and the door just to open it okay now the most important thing buying indian groceries should not be problem there right uh, getting indian groceries here it's a uh, a bit difficult for two reasons because there are not many options so there are limited number of shops uh, the indian stores which offer you indian groceries and also they are expensive so for example uh, yesterday i bought a uh, uh, soap okay pair soap which in india costs about 36 rupees but i got it for 1.25 euros um, i also bought uh, Patanjali Dant Kanthi the toothpaste and uh, this is 85 rupees in India this is 200 gram pack and i bought it for 5.75 euros so you can make out the difference uh okay okay the thing that matters the most tell me how much in hand salary i should be getting there in order to survive comfortably okay so when you compare the salaries of belgium with the uk germany or us salaries here are really not that high so don't compare uh, otherwise you'll be disappointed but uh, this thing also depends uh, how much salary is sufficient for you on your situation are you single are you with a family are you the only uh, you know working person in your family and do you have any responsibilities financial commitments like loans etc so this figure will really depend on that but just to give you an example uh, if you are a single person you are living in a shared uh, uh, accommodation with someone else who's sharing uh, the expenses with you uh, then a salary around if you in hand you get 2300 or so it you will be able to lead a good and comfortable life here with some savings as well Thank you. Well, those were my questions. Thanks for answering. I'm a bit demotivated. I think a country like Belgium is not for me. I think I'll consider going to USA, UK, Australia or Canada or Russia. No, 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 no. I know my answers were a bit demotivating. but the whole point of this video was to already let you know about the challenges which you might face when you come here so to just uh, handle that shock that you might receive but uh, there are so many good things the same reasons for which i'm staying here for more than 4 plus years and working i'll share those good points very soon in the next video so stay tuned Hey you are still watching my video thank you thank you thank you so much for watching it till the end i hope you found it really really helpful so support my channel like this video if you found some really useful information if you have some questions or comments don't hesitate to type it in the comment section i will be happy to respond to them and stay tuned to my channel by subscribing to it subscribe to all the notifications so that you get in touch and you get the taste of my content the very first